if if we're making mouth noises, I can get another pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's for realsies now. Hey, guys. Hi, 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 Beth. <laughs> wow, that sounds really unforced. <laughs> well, I was going to call you drunk, Beth, then I didn't because I know you don't Aww, like it. Well, I appreciate your effort. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about Leo. We're going to have a few stories about interactions with the police. Law enforcement officers. They're real. They're out there. And they can give you a ticket for peeing in deep playa. Yeah, they can. But sometimes they're really nice to you. And they will pull you over if you're drinking and driving or don't have a seatbelt on. Oh, yeah, they totally will. And then they're probably not going to be really nice to you. No. Sometimes they still are, though. Yeah. Yeah, they... Sometimes. A bunch of these stories are about how they're nice to people. Yeah, so today we're going to hear from uh, Zeno and Relay, who you've heard from before. And we're also going to hear from Foxtrot and Cream Pie, but also from Rex and D-Day, you and me. Yeah, the host of this this little crazy podcast we got here. Because we've been going for a while, and when you go for a while, you, uh, you're you going to talk to cops. It's it, it's just a thing that happens. Beth, have you ever talked to cops on the fly? Um, I had a friend hang out and take camera footage when a cop was angrily <laughs> arresting someone on playa. Well, that's a, that's a very different interaction than any of the interactions we're going to hear about today. Yeah, that's yeah. intense. Yeah, it was good. I yeah. have to say, of all of my interactions with the police, period, and I'm from Pennsylvania, where we've got some legendarily unhappy state troopers, um, I have largely had really pleasant interactions with the cops on Playa, even when I've kind of been being an irresponsible asshole. I'll tell you this, I saw the cops this last year lined up along the esplanade from the man to the temple. Uh, They were memorializing their fallen comrades. And when we say cops, we don't mean it in a pejorative, and we don't mean just beat officers. The entire melange of uh, of Leos out there can be boiled down to the, the loving term cops. There they were lined up, participating in one of our community rituals. They they were honestly engaged with the temple for the purpose that we bring it out. They were supporting us in kind of a surprising way. I will say it's always really uncomfortable to be out on Playa experiencing the art and, uh, and taking part in the community and generally being a happy jackass. And then I discover that, like, I'm within a bunch of feet of somebody with a sidearm. That's always very, very sobering to me. The nastiness of cops being what they are is not really mitigated by the environment of the planet. And we're not going to get into the politics of policing or how policing is carried out in these United States of America. We all feel very ambivalent about them. They're real human beings, but at the same time, they're oppressive and awful, and they uphold a bunch of laws we don't believe in. Um, But they're, they're still people. And we want to like people. Ten principles also extend to the folks that come to our community to make sure that our community is safe and is responsive to the laws of greater Nevada and these United States, which Black Rock City resides in. Accuracy third, where our personal politics and our practical principles are sometimes at odds. Often. Often at odds. (laughs) And now we're all back on the same page. (laughs) So we were in a, yeah, we were in a power vehicle and... We just backed out of Thunderdome, a family night at Thunderdome. So we knew that the lights worked because we needed all of them to get out of the 200 people crammed around Thunderdome. We're in the back of the truck and we're going across Playa and we're like, yeah, let's go look at the heliotropes. Great. And all of a sudden, woo, we see Christmas lights right behind us. We're like, what the fuck? That's so weird. So we pull over and uh, my ex was driving at the time. He gets out and he gets out of the truck and he's super responsible and it's like, you know, one of the only sober people on DPW probably. And he's like, hey, you know, what's up? And it's this young buff cop. And he's like, you don't get the fuck out of your vehicle in a traffic pullover. You get back in your vehicle. And we're like, is it a traffic pullover if you're not on a road? Where do you think you are? And he's just young. He's probably like 24. And he's like, you don't have any brake lights. You don't have any rear lights. It's a staff car. Yeah, It's during event week. And we're like, uh, and, he, and he's, and he's uh, puffing up and he's doing this whole thing. And then this older cop gets out and he's obviously been to the burn like a number of times this tall skinny dude and he walks over and he's like hey how's your guys night going we're like well it was going better before <laughs> and he like looks at the young guy and he's like hey where are you guys going we're like oh we're gonna go check out the heliotropes he's like oh those are super cool yeah i saw him yesterday we're like cool he looks at me and he's like do you have a headlamp that goes red i'm like yeah and he looks at my friend he goes do you have a headlamp that goes red and she's like yeah and he's like okay you sit there 
on the corner. You sit there and you turn on your headlights and point them down. Now you've got brake lights. Have a good night. And he gets back in his truck and he looks at the young guy and he's like, "Be good." And he's like, "Yeah." And they get back in the truck and they drive away. And then we go find the heliotropes. Tell us your story about law enforcement. Okay, so this was one of the nights that I'd gone out by myself to have adventures. And I still remember what I was wearing, which was a skirt that I had put together. I had come from upstate New York. And I was sick of seeing all of the discarded gloves on the ground after the thaw every spring. So in order to not waste all of that good leather, I made a skirt out of it with like the fingers all flapping over over my butt. And it was really cute. And I was out by myself and I ran into this friend of mine that I hadn't seen in many years. And my first reaction was to tell him, oh, I'm just having this, you know, alone night. I tried to do that. But he was in really bad shape. He had been sober for nine years and had just broken that that night kind of by accident. A friend had given him a bag of mushrooms and he was uh, in a really, really bad shape, just full of like self-recriminations and just having a really anxious, awful, awful time. So I said, yeah, of course, I'll walk with you. Of course, you know, I'll, I'll help you out. He was like, man, I I still have the bag of mushrooms. I I don't know what to do with it. If I have it, I'm going to keep using it all week. Like, please just take this from me. Do me a favor because I just can't have this in my possession. So I said, okay, fine. I'll, you know, hold this for you. And I like rolled it up and put it in one of the gloves. And uh, we were walking along and, and he was just pouring out his heart. And I was so focused on him that I didn't realize that there was a car that had been following us for quite some time at walking speed very slowly. I realized as it pulled up next to us, I realized that it was a cop car. And I had no idea how much of this she'd seen, if it looked like it was a, you know, sketchy drug deal, you know, anything. And here I am stuck sweating under the headlights with someone else's drugs in my pocket. It wasn't even like my drugs. And I was just freaking out, but not as much as my friend next to me, who was really freaking out, Um, like wild eyed, sweating, tugging at my arm, kind of freaking out. And I'm like trying to hold him still as the cop window is rolling down and, uh, I'm going, okay, you know, just just keep it together, keep it together. And this woman cop uh, leans out the window and she says, look, man, I usually don't do this, but I got to tell you, your skirt is so freaking cool. I've never seen a skirt like that before. Like, did you make it? Where did you get it? And I'm like holding my friend still with one hand and I my heart is racing. And the only thing I can think of is these words that come into my head and I just blurt it out and I go no glove, no love. And and she like gives this huge, genuine grin at me. And she gives me an honest to goodness thumbs up, rolls up the window and like rolls out into the night. (laughs) It's, it's an interesting group of folks that very much want to be there and request that deployment year after year Mm -hmm. and a certain number of officers who for one reason or another have it foisted on them yep well and i heard that they actually fly people in international or not internationally they fly people in nationally to do uh training cadets in to train them on crowd control drunken disorderly and like all the things that they Mm -hmm. will encounter out there so you get this yeah this weird cross-section of super cool folks who've been out there a couple years who just want people to be safe and then you get this cross-section of like cadets just out of cadet school and you're like whoa Oh, this is an interesting combination. So you can call the cops and take that gamble, or you can find a ranger <laughs> <laughs> who is a part of the org who is specially trained to deal with people who are having an awesome party and might need a little bit of help. Yep. Especially if you are having difficulties with your neighbors who will be your neighbors for the rest of the event. Oh, that's half of the Don't job of the Don't do anything yeah. fucking rash and call the police <laughs> because people are being dickheads to you. Yeah. D-Day, do you speak from experience? No fucking way, man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> IRL, I have had the police called on me any number of times because yeah. I have been having a great time or I've just been doing work in the yard. But that's... <laughs> That, yeah, that's that's my reasons. own cross to bear. But man, <laughs> like you're all at a party. If you're having a problem and you don't want to deal with it, don't even deal with it yourself. Call a ranger. Yeah. Unfuck your burn. Yeah. We're absolutely. unfucking our burns here. <laughs> <laughs> I had an experience with a law enforcement officer came up to me one night as I had, I had just finished a ranger shift on burn night. 
and I was back in my camp. My whole camp had left, and I was changing out of my ranger gear and getting ready to go out and have myself a good old time. And this cop pulls up right in front of the camp and gets out and starts walking right into the camp, and this makes me real nervous. <laughs> and he walks right up to me, and he says, Hey, excuse me, excuse me. What intersection is this? They stole the damn streets. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I had a BLM ranger roll up on me. One of those rangers that requests to come back year after year mm -hmm. has like done shifts in the cafe. I've seen him talking to like old timey cafe management and he rolls up on me because he recognizes me because I'm a guy with a big curly haired bright green mohawk and he's chatting at me. And I'm a little uncomfortable because I had been contrabanding some contraband and I had said contraband behind my back. And he says, D-Day, what's your opinion on medicinal marijuana and whether or not Nevada <laughs> should be adopting it or shouldn't be adopting it? And I was just like, well, I really have no opinion on that. Sir. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, can you just pass me that joint and stop pretending like I'm some <laughs> asshole who doesn't know that you're smoking pot on playa? <laughs> And he handed me a BLM deputy badge. Nice. And then he drove off with my joint. <laughs> oh, that's how you got that badge. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's how I got that badge. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, uh, I have no idea where that badge is. It's a great oh, badge. Oh, I think I have two or three. You can have one if you want. You're talking about the little plastic junior deputy ones, right? Oh, no. no this one's like 10. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. No, they have a bunch of plastic ones, uh -huh. but they make a couple hundred like... Yep. Metal ones. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're really nice. good. But out there, I forget that I'm wearing the deputy pin uh, when I'm wearing it. And if I'm wearing a radio, no matter how asshole I otherwise look, people will treat me like I'm an officer sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I do a, not a look star. like an officer of the law. <laughs> In anything other than like a Mad Maxian, Judge Dredzian future hellscape. Hey, you could have been one of their undercover oh. agents who's been made and just gave up on it. I would never. And I don't look like someone who would ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you fellas know where I can get the dabs? Oh, man. That <laughs> or is have such a, a cheeseburger for my munchies. Don't most <laughs> you of those. Know. Don't most of those lawsuits get totally tossed? It depends on whether people fight it or if they just take mm. a plea deal. Right, right. Um, but there are lawyers without lawyers who will help you uh, lawyer <laughs> your stuff. So if anything does happen on Playa and you get nabbed or whatever, there is a team of burner lawyers burn, who will burn, be... Burnlawyers.net? Without borders. <laughs> Did either of you do the research on what we need to know about these lawyers that help folks out? They're called Lawyers for Burners. Lawyers for Burners. Yeah, the ACLU is also present. I love Lawyers Without Lawyers. Can they rename themselves Lawyers Without Lawyers? Because that does my heart so much good. Well, if you get a ticket from the cops and you call Lawyers for Burners, you are a burner with lawyers. Burners without lawyers need lawyers for burners, which is what this is. Lawyers yes. for burners, very straightforward. Lawyers for burners. Also, again, the ACLU sends representatives out to monitor the cops. Google it. Chances are, if you are not, I don't, I don't know if you guys are from the 80s and 90s, <laughs> but if you are not a pusher, <laughs> chances are you're getting nabbed in some sort of coercive way yeah. and please like get legal representation yeah and if you are a pusher don't do that shit yeah stop pushing playa. yeah yeah it's not a place for pushing or pimping or pumpernickel bread because no, that it, shit either stales immediately or goes moldy if you want to sell drugs to burners sell them before the event and we can all take our own risk they can all take their own risk oh that's right because your hosts do not do illegal things at <laughs> Or go to Burning right, man. man this year. Aww. It's Aww. fine. Aww. Man, yeah. I have a son. No, it's it's great. I mean, that part's great. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's not up to you. Is your son going to Burning Man? He will. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my. I so you? wish that I knew adults were doing this when I was a kid. Right? Mm. I had no yeah. idea. To be fair, like, I grew up in a really poor part of the country, and shit was really hard and really real for a lot of people, including my folks, for a while. But I had no idea that you could grow up and still play. The ESD, the the shack for for communications is far away. It's, yeah, it's not. Like it's outside, outside the, city, the city. It's outside the city limits. Um, so. So you have to drive in. So I, you can you, could, you, you can, can bike. bike or you can walk. Um, I I have walked and 
100% of the time I've been picked up by law enforcement, and they, <laughs> which is good they, they, because I'm wearing a uniform and so they know who I am. Right. They know that I'm one of, essentially one of them, but not really. And also law enforcement camps, like their stuff is right next to the ESD stuff. Yeah. So they're going in the same direction. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll drive you in and out and it's not a problem. And they like to, they actually like to talk um, because it's one of, we're like one of the bridging groups of people that mm-hmm. they feel safe talking to that like they know that we know how to do our job and we're not fuck offs uh-huh. and and we're at least sane part of the time right <laughs> if there's a person in a yellow shirt you can be damn well like 99.9 percent sure that they are sober that they have their wits about them my conversations with them some i'm oftentimes really sad for their experience because they have the unhappy job of dealing with the worst shit that goes on at burning man and that's oh, yeah. most of the time if they're not looking for anything else and they're there mostly to work that that's all they see and they don't often see the the good stuff and if you're dressed like a police officer even if you're off duty you're not going to be you're not going to be as lucky to meet genuine people and have authentic communications with them and and oh absolutely um, so the majority of the people that i talk to the, the cop wise uh were were just like i don't understand why you guys do this like these people are so terrible and they're so mean to each other and they do such stupid things but they're still people from that county mm-hmm. mostly some of them are retired and they come back just for that right. contract but there are people that are within that county and is it winnemucca no i don't i don't uh, the there was. Uh, it's Pershing. It's, it's Pershing, Pershing now, and we pushed away Washaw County and it's Wash- um, because but- Washaw was the county that was like instituting all of the nudity laws and shit because they were a primarily cult based county. <laughs> Seriously, in Pershing and Washoe, there really aren't very big cities. No. So these people, even though they're on their regular beats or whatever their regular schedules they don't see inner city type interaction i tell people it's about the population of bend oregon sure so mm-hmm. if you know like if you go skiing or whatever which a lot of people do uh bend it's like bend in the desert uh it's pretty much the same spread of kinds of interactions kinds of emergency situations yeah it's that, accidents and we're almost a college and- town we yeah. we are essentially a college town. Um, what you don't have are uh, the the emergency calls that come in for infants, and you don't have the emergency calls that come in for the very elderly, mm-hmm. because we don't have those populations out there very often, if at all. So we still get heart attacks. We still get strokes. We still get some drinking related. Altercations. There's altercations, but I was mostly talking about the like medical stuff or oh, like yeah. dehydration. It's a lot of dehydration uh-huh. and it's a lot of rebar accidents from people that drive rebar stakes into the ground mm-hmm. and they're they're very sharp <laughs> on the top and uh-huh. they don't bend them properly and, or cap and them. Yeah, so it's most of the same kinds of stuff that you would encounter in a regular city. It's those kinds of injuries. It's not a lot everyone, less gunshot wounds. Uh, yes. Not, uh, I mean, the cops do taser people. <clears throat> I did have an interaction with law enforcement. Please share. Okay, so again, there was a girl. We're sitting on the Volari, which is a staff car, is a renowned staff car. It's garbage. I mean, it's really, it, it, it works. Yeah, they make it work every year. <laughs> it's beautiful. It looks like it's been in a demolition derby. Yeah, it looks like that, but it runs like a dream. It's, it's the spirit of Burning Man. <laughs> I think you have um, to push start it. No, it, uh, de- but that's it depends fine. on the year. Sometimes you need to push start it <laughs> before there was 70,000 people. And so we're doing this, and I'm sitting on the hood with this girl, and a friend of mine had given me a, a, a few pills, and I was like, oh, these look fun. And <laughs> <laughs> were they in the shape of Pac-Man? No, no, they were just pill-shaped. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, just take one of them. And I was like, well, if one is fun, three must be like, <laughs> three times as fun. So <laughs> took all of them because I'm dumb. Um, and or a grown up, right? I make my own decisions, <laughs> Grandma. Um, so, and at that at, at that year, I had three different places I was camping. So I was telling the school, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm camped over there." And I pointed, and over there, and I pointed, and over there, and I pointed really hard, and I slipped and fell off 
the hood <laughs> <laughs> because these three pills were no fucking joke. And my muscle control is a little off. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and the and the car, the Velari, ran over my foot. Oh, made the entire car with 20, 30 people on it over my foot. It hurt like a motherfucker. And I heard all these people freaking out. They're like, oh my god, man down, man down. And I was embarrassed. I was like, no, no, no it's cool. No, yeah, no, never mind. No need to draw attention to the fact that I just did that. Uh, no, you, just, you guys just roll on. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to hobble over to uh, center camp, and I'm going to have this looked at. It's uh, it's all good. Don't worry about it. So I hobbled down, and they're like, uh, well, we don't have an x-ray machine, but we could uh, wrap it up real tight. And I was like, uh, let's do that. And they're like, well, we think you should really get an x-ray. And I was like, I think I don't want to leave. And they're like, well, medically, we cannot compel you. And I was like, oh, no said. Just wrap it up, and I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the second you say you can't compel me, I'm done. <laughs> of note, though, is now they do have uh, x-ray machines. They oh, I thought portable. you were going to say the power to compel. No. I thought so, too. I thought yeah. they were all exorcist. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Nope. Now they do have x-ray so machines. So that year, uh, my foot was fairly fucked up. And uh, that year, also, my friends that were building the uh, the man base were late. They were not done by the time the event started. They were actually working through Thursday of the event, which is super stressful oh. and sucks a lot. That must have been 03. So uh, I wanted to go check out the uh, the man base, but my hobbly, brokey-ass little foot thing insisted that I wasn't going to walk there. And I was like, well, I have a truck, and I have... DPW stickers, and I was still hanging out with this cute girl. I was like, "Yeah, let's just drive out there. It'll be fine. It'll be just it's the middle of the night. No one's out there." So I get in the truck and I start driving. The second I cross Esplanade, I see headlights, 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 all pointed at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn it! And so yeah, I like rolled up. I just stopped the truck and got out with my beer. And uh, BLM comes up. He's like, "Hey, what's up?" I was like, oh, nothing. I was trying to, you know, drive to the man. To... I gave him the story. And he's like, you been drinking? I was like, I got a beer in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to hide nothing. And he's like, oh, yeah? I was like, yeah, I took a pill or two, too. It's cool. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, not so much. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, what? how we, how, how are we going to do this? He's like, well, I'm going to write you up, and I'm going to take you to Reno. And I was like, ah, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, Black Rock City Rangers show up and the two rangers split off expertly one goes to the cop one goes to me the one that goes to me says shut your fucking mouth (laughs) and walks me away (laughs) the other one takes the cop and talks whatever ranger foo they have to the cop and the ranger that's talking to me is like look you fucked up (laughs) and i was like yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm the one with the beer in my hand in front of the fucking cop. Yeah. I know I fucked up. <laughs> Let's get to the point where you get me out of this. <laughs> yeah, I've been fucking up for years. Right, I dude. am <laughs> I am comfortable with how this feels right now. I was like, yeah, yeah, this feels about right. <laughs> yep. And so he's like, look, uh, we're going to have to do something so that the cop is mollified. And we're going to take your truck to D-Lot, which is the place where... You- detention yeah, lot. It's detention. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the bad place. Mm-hmm. Me. So like, this ranger is like, all right, so we're, we're taking your truck to D-Lot, and you can't have it for the rest of the event. Like, that's just how it's got to be. Like, the cops, <laughs> the cops are here, and you, you know, do whatever you need to do. And I, he's like, you don't need to drive for your job. And I was like, no. Um, however, uh, there is one small hiccup in your plan, and that is that I live in my truck. And he's like, well, you have some place to put it. And I was like, well, there's this girl that I've been trying to bang. <laughs> 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 I just unload all of my stuff at her place. <laughs> so we do that. And he drives me to D-Lot. Meanwhile, the other ranger convinces the cop, no, no, this guy is vital to the operation of Burning Man. I am not. Not even fucking close. I am a hammer monkey. I bend more nails than I drive. What? I am not vital whatsoever. But the cop is mollified. He ends up taking the you know, permanent shit on my record, turns it into a $50 you know, driving on a dune, basically, when, when you're not supposed to. Uh, $50, not even on the record. I'm like, cool, awesome. So I get back, and it uh, turns out girl's not so uh, down with me just moving in with her. <laughs> <laughs> Which I get. I totally get. Sure. <laughs> so, Unfortunate, nonetheless. Right. And I'm like, uh, I know what D-Lot is. I know where it is. And I know who the fuck is watching over it. So I just go to D-Lot, 
get my truck and drive it back. (laughs) (laughs) And no one asked me a goddamn question. I just walk with purpose like I'm supposed to be doing it, and I do it. (laughs) Even with all of the command and control um, between Burning Man and law enforcement at this point. Like it just takes one volunteer that's watching d that doesn't know what's going on. He's like, not oh, I guess it's okay. Track. Yeah, no, there's there's too much shit going out on there and the plan is initially too anarchistic to ever put mm-hmm. so much control on that like traffic violations are going to be tracked in that way. Mm-hmm. Um if there is somebody with like a half a pinky toes worth of an in, you might as well be in the entire way. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a, a funny uh, challenge that when Gates started, <clears throat> like there used to be very fewer departments. Right. When like it yeah, was like, Gate and Perimeter, and they're like, we got this. They threw down a keg challenge. They're like, we will bet DPW a keg that you cannot sneak anyone in past uh. us. We won that keg within six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Accuracy Third is produced by Accuracy Third. Accuracy Third is also edited by Accuracy Third. And the music you've been listening today on Accuracy Third was also made by Accuracy Third and a guy named Jim. Wow. That's a heck of an outro. Yeah. And there's only like one or two words that you completely missed. <laughs> <laughs> But it's cool. I think everyone got the gist. No, no, no. You're good. You're golden. It's all good. Stop. No, really. Just stop. We're going to start the next thing. We're good. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, because we need to say that Accuracy Third is distributed under Creative Commons. And you can visit us online at www.accuracythird.com. And we are also on the Facebook. Something, something on Pinterest.